demonstration standpoint it's kind of fun but as I start turning up the heat and the stress on this this becomes more realistic good job by the way getting in the way but as soon as I you're not going to be able to take a child and recreate this whole situation from a law enforcement standpoint from a military standpoint there's a, a huge significance for being as realistic as possible but from the family standpoint if I have this child here and you're trying to protect yourself now, how do you engage this? Because now this is your child, or your grandchild, or something of that nature. Now you can see what this looks like. This isn't a game anymore. This isn't notional. This is real. The only thing that's not is the ability of the outcome. Nobody's going to die. Everybody's going to be safe. And you've learned something about yourself and the ability to win the situation. The kids learn something as well because now you didn't say anything to me. You just want to hit me over the head with it, and you just wanted to pull the trigger because you got some anger issues. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the dialogue—it's a short area. It's a short little confined space. But if we were inside the home, I would have liked to have heard your words to let these kids know this means business. Yeah. Go to the corner. Yeah. And that's that's also part of the the instruction here is learning things to where is. We've gone in on, on people and started teaching them, and what comes out of it is not, oh my god, I need to know my weapon better, it's, you know what, I don't want a weapon, I'm getting dogs. So, it just depends, also, you're not always going to be sitting here next to your pistol, and all those types of things, you're going to have to start yeah. dealing, because like when you're sitting around and you have children in the room, there's issues that will come down, and you have to go to your weapon, or you're going to have to reach under something, or go to your weapon's case, and open things up, and you have to get through your house. Part of what we do is also take that scenario and play that one all the way through is where you have to address the attack, you have to find it, and it's not just immediately going straight at it. There's other things that absolutely come into play here. You have to go get it. Like I said, most people don't sit around. I don't know about you guys, maybe you do. I don't know. Most people don't sit there with a gun in their lap or a gun on the table while they're watching TV. Uh, in the middle of the night, most people don't sleep with a, a gun underneath their pillow anymore. It might be in the nightstand or on the nightstand, or it's usually in the closet in the safe. The time it takes you to respond when that door gets kicked in, and the time it takes to get over to the safe or wherever, is the time that you need to respond to and react to. And a lot of times, people need to adjust or, or change the layout or change their mindset, and that's what we have the ability to exercise safely. Even if a round, a live round was introduced into this magazine, it wouldn't go into chambers, so there's no way for a live round, even if it was introduced, to go on. So, technically speaking, that's 99.9% .9 safe. I can't count for 1% student. So, that's the effect of the safety standpoint. It's huge for being able to do it inside the home and being able to actually make you respond accurately to what really could happen. And it goes from a sleep mode, too. You wake up in the middle of the night, how long does it take you to actually say, did that door actually get kicked in? Am I dreaming? What am I supposed to do? And a lot of people kind of game out, they kind of think about it, but they don't actually do it. Until you actually do it, it's notional. You can pretend all day long. So, you guys want a little bit more? Sure. Okay, let's switch it up here. Let's get somebody that can pull a trigger. Yeah, yeah, let's get you. You've been sitting there kind of nice. You want to do it with the camel hat? Sure. Come on up. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. 
are. I keep forgetting about that. Guys, you're good. Do you shoot a lot? Okay. All right. Are you familiar with this? Pistol? M9? Okay. So, I'm going to let you take it. You guys are okay? I'll get you guys off. You can sit in the middle and walk. Keyshawn. Good job. You have a concealed carry? Okay. Go ahead and put that in your waistband. Concealed carry, and you've got that, and you know how that circle works. You got that little thing, you don't want the whole thing coming out. There's a little button on the side. That thing right there. Ah. But right, that would have been a great demonstration. Know your, know your gear. <laughs> All right, you, you pretty good with that? Where's that button? Expensive right. plug. So you're inside someplace. You're ordering a cheeseburger, wherever the case may be, and all of a sudden this guy right here comes in. <laughs> you got to get that gun out pretty quick, don't you? Yeah, so let's get that gun out. Let's try that again. You're going to be knowing it's going to come out, so put, put it back in there. Because you're not walking into the store. <laughs> I'd like a cheeseburger, please. <laughs> you, you want a cheeseburger? <laughs> but the other side is going to be on you, so. Well, it's better to cheeseburger. Here, we'll start from here. It's caught. Safety is on. Don't forget that. Here, I'll even give you a fighting chance. And don't put it in all the way. Go ahead and put your hand. Just nice there. Just leave it just like that. Oh, I tried to help you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You're in the store again. And you know what? Some crackhead just happens to come through the door. And you're actually ready for it this time. So, you ready? I'm not. So. Okay. Is there anything threatening right now? Not really. Did you, did you, did you just give me a stink eye? <laughs> sure. Give me a stink eye. I think you get. I think you get. I think you get a stink eye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The point here, guys, is that you can go ahead and holster that back up again. <laughs> All right. It's fun. It's it does have a little theater to it. Um, but the reality is, is that we're learning skills. At this point in time, he's able to say, you know what, this holster doesn't work. My reaction time to that wasn't good. What's my situational awareness? How am I, you know, how am I responding to a situation that just one person just kind of coming in? And what's the position that he's going to do? So we can teach it safely. I don't know any other way to teach somebody other than a little rubber gun, but it doesn't matter. If you stick that little rubber gun out, you don't pull the trigger. You don't have acuity to where your rounds are going. You don't have the acuity to you actually pulling that trigger. And the other thing, too, is that judgment honesty call. Because, like, in here, there's a million other things he can do in between getting that gun out and getting it either in his chest, in his, like, just tattoo him straight up, come out, punch him, or even getting that arm up and defending himself while he's getting that gun to either put a separation between it so he can get that shot off. And, you know, there's kids in the room. There's different ways of doing every single thing here. There's a million ways. There's ways guys, there's ways girls can do it as well. One of the big things here, guys, and this is something that most people never get the chance to do, if you resolve a lot of internal issues with this, is go ahead and pull that out, is when we're doing these, he's looking me in the eye. As I'm coming through, you're looking at me. You know, you're not going to be able to get that 
a lot of people, a lot of women, will sit there and they'll they'll have that hesitation. And you learn a lot about yourself to be able to know that you can put that up. So go ahead. Oh shoot! <laughs> <laughs> shoot me, please. Shoot it up here. Yeah. You probably the won't point here is, is that as you're looking, I'm looking at you. I'm not I'm not a paper target anymore. I'm removing the the uh, training scar of is it a piece of paper? Oh, I only shoot paper. What is a piece of paper? With? You're not a piece of paper anymore. Why? What, what's this look for? Now you get to see that threat in my eye. You get to see what it looks like to actually pull that up on somebody and know if you have the fortitude to actually pull that trigger. If you don't, you learn something about yourself. You know what you're capable or not capable of doing. Because at the, at the at a certain point, I mean, if you if you look into the statistics and you look into interviews when they're interviewing the assailants and the the people who've been attacked. There's a there's a disconnect at a certain point, as Joel is saying here, when you're coming up with that weapon and you're realizing I'm about to point it at another human being and have to pull the trigger, there's a judgment call moment in in, in these people are doing the after actions. And a lot of times women, guys as well, even cops, because they barely ever practice and they don't train to the reality of the situation. There's that fragile second of hesitation to where if you know what you're doing, if we're coming at you, that thank you for the gun. Now, you're going to do what I tell you. You know, it's like, and they understand that that will happen most of the time because if you're going to go for your gun, the moment that you understand that this sucker's coming out, you've already made the decision that there's this person's dying, this person's getting it. It's not like you take it out and you start directing traffic like in an Iraqi traffic cop or something like that. It's, it's, you've already made that decision once you start going to pull, and you, you gotta do it. Guys, I know it's hot. It's a little bit cooler underneath the shade. You guys in the back are getting a great tan. Um, thanks for coming out. If you guys have any questions, we're more than happy to, to answer more questions that you guys have. If you guys wanna get behind the pistol there, I'll give you a couple rounds. And I'll give you one second here. Yeah, one second. And the good thing about this training is that, as you all know, with Attorney General Eric Holder and the Fast and Furious. He yes. didn't know anything about it. Okay, well. I don't know what talking about. And when he had mentioned in his C-SPAN interview that what he wanted to do is start to brainwash people not to like guns. And if not what, Yes. <laughs> so this is important that we understand. <laughs> okay, so it's important that we understand why it's important to understand the Second Amendment, support candidates who support the Second Amendment, and be able to learn these skills and techniques so that we can protect ourselves. We're not going to have special ops and Navy SEALs in our homes. So what is the next best thing to do? Come to uh, training events like this, download the DVD, download the videos from the website, so that we can learn practical tips so that we can keep our families and our children safe when the unexpected happens. So this is great. Thank you for coming out. Uh, we have business cards that we're going to pass out. And we're going to offer another training this afternoon. OK, does anybody have any questions? You said a five? That's what Bob said OK. OK, okay that's what we'll do. So we'll meet back here. We'll make another announcement. And you guys can come back here. Okay. Yeah, guys, um, just, you know, if you can, show a little appreciation on the way out. I mean, Miss Leonard, we got to try to help get her in Congress as well. And, you know, if, if, if we can, if there's a, you know, we can do any kind of collection or anything like that, donations, that would definitely help out. So, okay. yes, no, have a good day. We'll see you on the range. Lots of booms. Come back and we'll do some more shooting at each other. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to let you know, as a law enforcement officer, I work in Don County. Okay. Uh, I actually like it a lot more with uh, people I deal with every day. Actually go through and get their character met. I recommend that because I, there's a lot of situations I can't respond to in a time when matter. Absolutely. And a situation arises, if they go through these classes and learn the function of a pistol and how to protect themselves safely, the carry permit <laughs> class, it's a lot easier for me. Also, yeah, also they, they, they can understand the tense situation that whenever you show up, it's usually there's a, there's a crappy it's situation. It's an situation that I arrived, yeah. I arrived in. 
or a lot of times it's already happened. They've had to deal with it. They've already lost it, and you know it's yeah. It's not. It's, it's the worst ceiling in the world. You get an active burglary call. You're about 25 minutes away, and it's happening at a residence with a single mother with a child, and you can't get there because you're stuck in traffic. Because people won't get out of your way to get to respond to that call in a timely manner. That's why I recommend every man go to gun training. Thank you for your insight. Absolutely. Thank you. Anything else? All right, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.